Guys, this is Quentin's People and Places. My name has always been Ohima. Today we made a little twist, you know. It was supposed to be Boys Casa, but we are doing a little twist because we're having a special guest on our show today. Give it up for us. Yeah, yeah, dear. We done well, yeah. So we have on my media right, I have NY, DJ NY, right? Yeah. And next to him is Daddy K. Actually, um, let me give them the, the honor to introduce themselves. You say, I'm going to myself. They're coming to talk about themselves. So, a little bit of themselves to us. So, let's know NY. Who is yep. NY? Um, I've always said that doing myself is one of the toughest things as you grow up. But then, let me try. So, okay. officially, I've been a Nanayao Donko. But right. then, um, I'm known as NY DJ in the space because of the Nanayao. Yeah. Uh -huh. But So, I'm a media person. I'm a radio presenter. I'm a, I'm a blogger. I'm a PR person, so basically a media guy, and of course a family guy as well. Thank you. I love, I love the family guy. I love that. Thank I knew you would love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, Daddy K, yourself. Okay, so Samuel Alexander Amfu in Tiamwa. Okay. That's my name. Um, I'm into home and improvement. All right. Uh, basically, I do tile buffing, okay. uh, landscaping, painting, and uh, I also do uh, extermination too. Oh, so right. basically, that's what I do. Uh, my area of expertise might not be in line with what you are supposed to be talking about today. Sure. But I'll try and chip in something Please that try. I know. I know yeah. you can, so try for me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so today our topic today is African music industry and how it is um, the, the Ghanaian music industry and comparing the Ghanaian movie, music industry and Nigerian movie industry. How is it going? How do you see it? See, so let me go to NY. How do you see the African music industry? Let's talk about the African music industry first. African music. Well, I mean, I doubt there's really a, an industry, but then of course we have African music. Africa is blessed with different sounds, different genres, and yeah. all that. If you go into any African country, you find different type of sounds. In Ghana, for instance. When you come to the Ashanti region, you can have your Adwine, Kitty, and all that. If you go to Accra, you can have them do their own. If you go to the Volta region, you can have the Pan logo and all that. So Ghana, even as a country, has different sounds, which the world is enjoying. Back then, you had the likes of Osibisa performing for the Queen out there. So it tells you that the music from this side of the world is doing so well. Luckily for us, there seems to be a very, a very big spotlight now where music from the continent is enjoying so much prominence all over the world. Okay. Uh, the past few years have seen music from a number of Nigerian artists becoming the biggest songs for the summer in the U.S. and all that. And that tells you that there's a certain attention, there's a certain direction where people are beginning to enjoy music okay. from, from Africa on the global scale. So for me, I think it's doing well. The only challenge is that perhaps we are just looking at a few countries dominating. Yeah. But for that, I think music from around the continent is doing well and serving its purpose. All right. Mm. So, Adike, what do you think? As NY would say, we are doing well. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you say about the African music industry? Yeah, um, I think we're doing well. Okay. It's not that bad as compared to, I would say, before. Yeah. Um, as we go into um, uh, the new world, I think that a whole lot of things are changing now. Okay. With the uh, introduction of this internet and stuff like that. It is also pushing the African music because back then it wasn't like that. Back then it was just you and just your country. Right. But today somebody could be sitting in their houses, in their homes, and then before you could know, bah, Internet, it's yeah. going. So I think it's really doing very, very well. Okay, so let's, let's look at this. How do you see the Ghana music industry and the Nigerians? Why is it that the Nigerians are there? Would I say there? Yes, <laughs> that's what I would say because we are loving the Nigerian music very well than the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian music. Well, so I think I have a challenge when we seem so fixated on Nigeria as a country. Um, yes, Ghana has always had this back and forth with Nigeria when it has to do with football, when it has to do with precedents. There are moments we are even saying which, which country has the best precedent. And we are comparing which president sleeps the most when they get to public events and all that. We've had that back and forth. And so it's quite understandable when we decide to pitch in the same thing when it comes to music. Okay. Um, I was having a conversation with somebody. I was telling them that, listen, Ghanaian music is doing well. Our artists are doing so well. Sure. The only challenge is that we compare ourselves to Nigeria. Let's not forget, a couple of years back, 
Ghanaian artists were dominated in Nigeria. First. You can look at Ms. Bell, you can look at a VIP, you can TikTok. talk about Tic Tac. Yeah. These were artists who dominated. Tic Tac, as at that time, was performing with 50 Cent and all that. Sure, sure. Tic Tac, back in some few years ago, was actually... I think um, the Peace Square lent a bit from... L listen, you can't run away from the fact that Ghana's music has influenced Nigeria. Of course. Even, and, even with a movie. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they, they've always had that thing with us. Yeah. So they, they tend to pick from us. We tend to pick from them. Yeah. Let's not forget, just a few years ago, when there was Azonto, and the whole world was dancing to Azonto, thanks to Fuso DG. Of course. We had Peace Square trying to coin something and call it Alingo. Alingo, yeah. Which, which Samini was all over on that on social media, fighting and saying, listen, you can't appropriate that. Do you get it? Because we know how they do it when they appropriate it. When they pick it up, they have a way of making it better and owning it. So that's happened. I was mentioning TikTok, for instance. TikTok at some point in time was in the UK where he had his images at the back of scratch cards, like core cards and all that. That sure. tells you how big our artists uh, have been. Yeah, yeah. There's only a challenge in that now we see all the Nigerian musicians out there because perhaps they've been able to identify a blueprint and they work with that. Ghanaian music is not doing bad. I mean, we have Ghanaian artists playing shows out there. Let's look at Africa, for instance. We have how many countries in Africa? Lots of them. Yeah. But we are fixated on Nigeria. Not too long ago, I saw the likes of Kaki, who is now not doing active music, yeah. selling out shows in Gambia. I've oh. seen Kwame Eugen and Kiri selling out Arena Stadium in let, Gambia. Let me say, is it because, <laughs> is it because the, the Nigerian music, I don't know, but is it because it sounds good? Is it because it sounds good or is the artist Listen, or... Listen, when, when it comes to sound, I can tell you that the Nigerian sound is not better than the Ghanaian sound today. Really? I mean, look at Westgate. Westgate is always in Ghana and is recording with who? Posse G. Posse G records for Sarkota, records for RTB. Skill Beats is also doing it. Yes. Do you know the number of Ghanaian producers who are working for a number of international artists? They get all those credits. So when it comes to sound, I don't think the Ghanaian sound, we have a problem when it comes to sound and production. It's just that, like I said, the Nigerians have a certain blueprint. And we just need we'll to... get to that. Yes, we we'll just need to, to find that. our blueprint. We'll get to that. So, Daddy K, let me, let me ask this. How do you see... I, would I say how do you see the Nigerian or the Ghanaian? Because they are doing very well. They are doing very good compared to us nowadays. Because I recently chanced upon um, Shetawali telling um, Sewami here that he's, he's, he's okay. Without doing music, he's okay. That means for a while now, he doesn't want to do music or he sees the music industry to be, I wouldn't say work, but mm -hmm. it's going down. So he, he's relaxed. Why relax? So what you say? You understand? So I don't know how the, how do you see it? I don't know how the music industry is going nowadays in Ghana. Well, I would say Nigeria is all the way up here and then Ghana is somewhere here, in my opinion. Yes. But do you blame them? You, you don't. Can't. You, you can't blame them because we are dealing with numbers here. Yeah. These people are like all over the place. Nigeria is estimated to be over 270 million people. Okay. Ghana is just 34 million. If I'm right, how do you compete with that? So you don't really blame the Ghanaian you know, industry that much just because of numbers. Because let me just say, um, on the average, the African continent or uh, citizens per country in, in Africa is about 50 million. Mm -hmm. And if Nigeria is like 270, that is like 10 times, you know. So like 10 countries, you know, challenging Nigeria. And then Ghana is, to, Ghana is supposed to like one of them. How do, you, how do you compete with that? So you can't really blame them. Is it a competition? It has to be a competition. Is it? Without a, yeah, it, there, it has to be a competition. Because without a competition, how do you know this one is taking over? Because NY, he said it's, it's a competition. Because I know clearly well that when you go to um, the radio stations, mm. you people, you play, you, <laughs> play, you play most of the Nigerian songs. More not than not the Ghanaian necessarily. Songs. Not necessarily. You see, there's, there's a certain mindset. And he made mention of numbers. Yes, numbers do play a role when you talk about music consumption and all there is today in yeah. any form of marketing. But you see, let's take ourselves back. Let's look at Jamaica. What's their population? But reggae music is all over the world. Yeah. I mean, at some point in time, reggae music was like the dominant music that everybody wanted to listen to. Let's look at the impact of the likes of Bob Marley 
and all those who are from, uh, from, from, from Jamaica. Jamaica has different sounds, but reggae has been that thing that sold the country. They don't have that population that Nigeria boasts of. No, they don't. But how did they do it? It was because they were deliberate or something. Let's not forget, Nigeria has been very deliberate at pushing music and movies. And they have at, this uniqueness in their music. You see, at some point in time, when you mentioned Nigeria, what came to mind? 419. Yeah, 419. Exactly. Fraud. And all Fraud. That. But when you mention Nigeria today, what comes to mind? Music. So they've been Good deliberate. Music. There's been a deliberate attempt at making sure that we have to rewrite the story. Unfortunately, with Ghana, everybody is doing what best they can do. Every artist is trying to put in whatever they can do. Okay. And so there's no deliberate time. We made mention of Shatawale saying that, I mean, for him, he stayed back. Shatawale has released like, how many songs this year? How many of them are hit songs? There's a challenge. He just needs to stay back and analyze and look at what's going on. Listen, rappers are even turning into dancers on TikTok oh, now. Oh, yes, yes. It's a challenge now. Exactly. So you need to understand where mm. the market is going, how far things are going. Take advantage of it and, and get, get into it. Because if you want to sit back and say, yes, I'm a well-known established artist and all that. Listen, artists all over the world, before the release of their music, put budgets together. Unfortunately, Ghanaians don't really have that much when it comes to the finances to put that, that whole thing together. But artists all over the world put together budgets. They map out strategies as to how they want their material released. Brenner Boy just released a new album, I told them. Before the album, do you know the number of interviews that had been lined up for him? him? Do you know the plugs? Almost every music store was in waiting. Do you get it? They are putting all the effort. Yeah. Unfortunately, as Ghanaians, a lot of us do not know so much about these things. And so we feel, so far as we send the music to a, a music store... Is it store, because we, we don't support our own? I don't think it's because we don't support our own. Ghanaians have been very supportive, trust me. Okay. I mean, for all the artists who have done numbers and sold out shows, who are supporting them, is it not the same Ghanaians? Yeah. Ghanaians easily get tired of people, I understand. But Ghanaians have always been very supportive of their own. And it's seen across from Kidi. Let's look at the past few years. The KK case, the Kidis, Kwame Eugene, Kofi Kenata, yeah. Kim Promise and all that. Who is supporting them? Ghanaians. It starts from the local space before those outside world gets to hear of them. We blame the media. We say the media is not supportive and all that. But you see, it needs to start from somewhere. Somebody on a certain platform actually heard Black Sherry's song. Yeah. Somebody heard it. And it moved from there together, collectively. It actually blew up. Yeah. So it didn't just start with a Nigerian tweeting the song. No, it started from somewhere. It was in Konongo. Somebody brought this. I remember somebody brought the song to YFM and said, Charlie, there's a guy. And I realized, oh, he even attended Kumaka. That's my own school. So I'm like, then he's my boy. I remember three music awards, the year we wanted to nominate him for, I think, um, I'm a board member for three music awards, so the year we wanted to nominate him for, was it Rising Star or something? A number of the people in Kumasi were like, nah, he's not that known, we don't know him, but we had had the privilege of knowing his streaming numbers from Boomplay and all those platforms. They were like, listen, this guy is the next big thing from the Ashanti region. They said, no, he doesn't, so okay, fine, we stay back. The next year, boom. Okay. So when it yeah. comes to the music, I mean, there's the support. Everything is happening. We just need to find that blueprint that the Nigerians are using. Are using. Let's not compare ourselves to Nigeria. The numbers game, yes. But then again, there is something we could do. How come Ghanaians are selling out shows in Gambia? Mm -hmm. anyway, How come Ghanaians so, are selling so, out shows? Anyway, sorry. Okay, so is it then, since it's uh, supposed to be like interactive program, mm. then Ghanaians are just being lazy. No, you see, you somebody, say lazy? Yeah, no, I, I somebody think... is selling out like the O2 arena. No, you are think... selling out in Gambia. No, you see, you see, that's where the problem <laughs> is. When we tend to think that Ashake, for instance, didn't just wake up and start selling out the O2 arena. Okay. No. It took deliberate attempts. Yeah. You see how Don Jazzy actually unveils his artists, his talents. Okay. Don Jazzy will tell you that he doesn't just bring out artists, he has to be in the lab. Like, he has to work on you for yeah, like. He puts in work. Between six yeah. to like 12 months. If you don't have that patience, if you don't have that time to wait, he's never bringing you out. They work. That's why I said there's a blueprint. There's something they've used I mean, and we, it's working we, we for them. We need to take our time. We need to study it. See, look at somebody like Kim Promise. You see what Kim Promise is doing? You see him with Westgate almost all the time. Yeah. And you think he's doing follow back. Just watch his move. In a couple of years, you see what Kim Promise will do. He's learning. He's deliberate. Do you get it? Ghanaian artists are doing everything by themselves. Trust okay. me. Look at somebody like Kamido. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Camilo single-handedly with George Britton, where are the plugs? But deliberately, they tried to do their best. At some point, they were flying to Kenya, Tanzania, and all that to go and do what? Interviews. You know why? They wanted to plug it. It's not easy traveling to these countries. No. You need to have the finances. You need to have the budget. But if you are not getting it, then there's a problem. So that's what I'm saying. We need to identify what the blueprint is for the Nigerians. You talk about numbers. Look at the entire population of Nigeria. They still have underground artists, right? Yeah. yeah they have they a do. lot of underground artists. They do. But we have the few top ones that we are mentioning all the time. The yeah. Whiskers, the Davidos, the Burner Boys and all that. We are mentioning them all the time. How come the underground ones are also not blowing? Does it mean they are also lazy? They are not. Exactly. So let's see this way. Why is Shatawale always attacking Sarkodie, um, Stone Boy and the likes? Why is he always attacking them? I wish he was here to actually answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> but they, I, I think it has to do and with... And the media guys too. I mean, you know. Yeah, I think it has to do with perspectives. Okay. You know, how he sees certain things. Because he, he, when he comes, he will talk his mind. He will say whatever he needs to say. Boom! Just like that. I mean, it's, it's allowed. Go. I, I know mean, it's everybody allowed. is allowed to sure. actually express themselves yeah. about what they feel. But like I said, it has to do with perspectives. Okay. I mean, as I sit here, that camera that looks at me right in the face will actually ca carry a certain direction. This one will carry a certain direction. Yeah. Do you get it? So it has to do with perspectives and where everybody is seeing something from. Maybe I could pay, pay what Shatawale says. Maybe he feels, listen, as artists, we need to come together and put together a flat rate and say, this is how much we are charging for a show. Okay. But if I sit back and I say, listen, there's a show that will propel me to actually earn more. And so I don't mind doing it for free. I may want to go and do it. Okay. Because it will put me in a certain spotlight. But Shatawale wouldn't do it because he feels you need to pay me to do that. Oh, do you yeah. get it? Yeah. So yeah. If, if I decide to take it for free, he will see me as, sorry to say, somebody who's not serious about the music business. But let's not forget, it's not always about what you earn today. Music. We, I mean, there are moments, let's look at the, the power of TikTok now. Mm -hmm. You sit here today and a song from, from Castro years ago it's Recent, popping up recently i think uh miss bell's one miss bell 16 years is, is trending yes, now trending. if if all the measures were put in place for the streaming platforms and all that it means she's still going to make some money now of course do you get it so and now always, i see her granting interviews exactly a lot. do you get it so you don't need to sit back and think it's just about what you make today people did me see when when artists release songs and they are not blowing now i keep telling a lot of artists listen don't stop doing it Keep putting them out. Put them on the digital platforms. A time cometh when one song blows and people start going back to all the songs they that will. you released. They will. So it has a retrospective effect. So we just need to understand that Ghanaian artists are doing well. Shatawale has his own perspective as to how he sees certain things. And he feels he has to air them the way he wants to go. At times, some of them are quite defamatory. I feel, I mean, you don't need to disrespect the works of others. He's been doing that for so long a time. At times they come back at him, at times they decide to just let it go. Depending on how they all feel about it. So for me, I think if he really is for the industry and he wants the industry to grow, then he just has to make sure he finds a way to deal about some of these things. By rubbishing all the successes and all the efforts of other talents, it's not the best way to go. All because right. a time comes when others will also come and rubbish what he's done. And I don't think that's the kind of industry we want to build. No. We want to see the legends and respect them. I mean, there were moments he talked about the likes of um, Kudrin Tree and all that and say that they are broke. Like, what the hell? Why would he say they are broke? Do you know what Kudrin Tree does? Do you know that things is done? And for an artist, because... Where he, he has taken the music industry to. You too? see? And for an artist to sit back and say Kudrin Tree is broke. Yo, oh. come on. Daddy, okay, let's look at this. See, Shatawale is attacking them. Is it like, will I say they are, not, they are not mining him or they don't want to pay attention to him or they are using it to push their music in the show. They are using it to push their music. Pa, 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 pa. He says, everybody, what, everybody, what, you alone too. You alone too, why? So, why? you see, um, Shatawale. Yeah. That guy, people just do underestimate Shatawale, in my opinion. That guy is a genius. He's a businessman. He's a genius at what he does. Mm -hmm. And then I think that guy has to be studied. Okay. Like he, he needs to be put in class okay. for people to st actually study him because that guy just doesn't talk for nothing. You might think he's just spitting anything, but 
he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. If you come to the country, what person hasn't Shatawali actually attacked. attacked or insulted? I can only think of probably the president, President Everybody. Mahama. Everybody. Um, Nanado. I'm sure he will even come for you. Oh, be, be mindful. Sometimes. He will even come for you. Oh, shut up. I'll wait for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think Nanado, Ma Mahama, and then Nana Otunfo was eighty two. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Except for those people. Basically, he's attacked everybody, insulted everybody. everybody. He doesn't give a hoot about who you are. He will just speak his mind. Come to think of it, some of the words he say could be true, right? Or yeah, should, should be told. Sometimes being too blunt isn't really accepted in our society. Yeah, but know? I think the approach, the approach he's, he's coming with is not good enough, but... The words he's saying or the things he's bringing out. Do you out. think Shatawale is ever going to change his, his Oh, approach? no, he can't. This dude went under the radar for how many years? For a couple of years, I mean. And then Five all of a sudden, he just resurfaced, right? From Bandana mm. to Shatawale. All of a sudden. No, but let's not forget. You see, I agree with you when you say Shatawale is a genius. He's, see, he's such an intelligent guy. Whatever happened, you remember that Ghana Music Awards where Kaki won, I think, the popular dancehall song of the year? Where Shatawale got angry and, yeah. start, and even released a song for Shata, um, for Kaki and insulted her. And, and insulted Reggie Rashton too. And you know, and even insulted BG Amazing yeah. and all that. Everything was engineered okay. by himself and Bulldog. Really? They had a plan. So so his comeback didn't just happen. It wasn't just a fluke. It was planned. So whatever Shatawale, let me tell you something. He said something. Whatever Shatawale does, he knows what he wants to achieve. Okay. Yeah. But the only thing is that, as he says that, it's about the industry. Is it for the collective good of the industry or for, or for his yourself. selfish gains? Yes. That's where the problem is. If you want to throw everybody under the bus, just so that you shine, I don't think you are doing anything better. Do you get it? Yeah. Because we can all shine together. But if you want to throw everybody under the bus, disrespect everybody, disregard everybody's achievements or what they are putting in, then that's not right for the industry. Okay. <laughs> we will come back to that. Well, then let's go for a quick commercial break. And we are probably sponsored by Sankey's Restaurant. Sankey's Restaurant is located at um, Commercial Area in Kumasi. Yeah, Commercial Area. It's in the building of um, Jubilee Moor. And we are also sponsored by Pretty Clothing Line. Pretty Clothing Line is located at Odium Runabout, opposite Aksoko River Bank and TJ Studios. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Thank you. Sankey's restaurant, our tech, inside the Bimo, Bahama, Modiani, nice, smoothly, humbly, flesly, you love it. Love it, you do. Hello, guys, welcome from that quick commercial break. So, let's, let's go right back into what we were discussing before we went on the commercial break. Okay, so let's still we are still talking about shatawali mm. anyway we are still talking about shatawali you know when shatawali comes for you or when when he he hits on you he stands on you and do all that i don't know for some reason he promotes you i don't know if you've noticed that because looking at he insulting reggie rackstone and his watchy and everything mm. the watcher is booming mm. Sure, the watcher is booming now well, let, let's not forget, you see, unless, of course, Shatawale doesn't know the power he possesses. Shatawale is, is, is such a... He's a he's demigod. A huge talent. I wouldn't call him a demigod, but he's a huge talent. He has a mass following, yeah, yeah. and he takes advantage of that. I mean, that's the reason why he has he that mass... crowd. Exactly. There, there's a reason he has that mass following, and he needs to take advantage of it. Yeah. Otherwise, it becomes waste. Okay. He understands what he's doing. It's, it's, it's quite unfortunate that he decides to take on people. You see, he earlier mentioned that the approach might not be welcoming to people. At times, you put the character aside and you listen to what he's saying and you ask yourself, is what he's saying true? Is it relevant? 
If it is, then you carry that. You forget about the character who is saying that. Because if you look at the Shatawa, uh, Shatawali character, then you might sit back and say, if he says anything, you wouldn't listen to because you say he wouldn't say anything sensible. Yeah. But far from that, if you sit back, listen to what he's saying, does it make sense? If, it's, if it makes sense, then yes. But if it doesn't make sense, then you see that it wasn't necessary. Okay. Yes, he says certain things about certain individuals and all that. Now, those individuals understand and know that Shatawali has some numbers, so they tap into it. Yeah. There are moments, so it's not about he wanting to promote you. He is doing what he I'm wants not sure to he do. Does, he, he knows he's promoting you by doing that. No, you see, he knows that when he comes for you, mm -hmm. there will definitely be a response. Okay. And he may he want to take advantage. Come for me, I beg. <laughs> <laughs> come for me. And there will definitely be a response. Okay. And he knows what he wants to do with that. Okay. I mean, ask yourself, who does Shatawali take on? Most of the time, these are people who perhaps have had something to do in the past. We revere them. They are influential and all that. Shatawali will not just go for anybody who is just by the street and doing whatever. I mean, what would he get from coming for you? So he knows who to attack at one point in time. And the other parties, if they are smart enough, they also tend to take advantage of whatever is happening. He attacked Reggie Rockstone. Yeah. Reggie Rockstone could have sat back and said, oh, I'll be the grandpapa. So Shatawale Akra, I mean, and sat back and continued to do whatever he was doing. But he realized that, listen, you are attacking me as being an, a gold man living in my father's house, selling wachi. Yes, that's what I do. I live in my father's house. I sell wachi. What's the big deal? How can I take advantage of this? Boom, let me market my wachi. Yeah. So he took advantage of that. Sure. So the other party would have to be smart to know how to also tap into it. Of course. So it's not deliberate about he saying that when he comes for you, then he's promoting you. The other party would have to be smart to take advantage of whatever hype there is going on. So that is it. So I don't think Shatawale deliberate, unless he says, okay, he arranges with you and say, listen, Chale, Moria, they go diss you. There's I'm something not sure with, he would deliberately do that, arrange with you, or artists, probably... Artists can do that. They do, yes. Artists I think can, for the, for the show-based business. Exactly. Artists do. can do that, can deliberately sit back and say, let's plan something out and let's see how it goes. Okay. They do that all over the time, all the time. Recently, if you look at America, for instance, there was this thing with Asha Raymond and uh, Kiki Palm. Yeah. Look, yeah, you yeah, know Kiki that Palmer, actress. Yeah. And then people were talking about how she looked and all that. Eventually, yeah. there's a music out there. Yep. So it was deliberate. There was a yeah. plan. Do you get it? So artists do that all the time, but I don't think Shatale deliberately uh, will call an artist and say, Charlie, let's plan and let's do this ourselves. No, it wouldn't happen that way. So according I would tell you that, I mean, if I have to reply you, it should be worth it. Yes. Do you get it? Uh huh. So that's how it works. Okay. So let's switch to this. Daddy K, how do you see our music, the our videos, comparing our videos, the Ghanaian videos or the music videos to the Nigerian, the Nigerian music video? How do you see the quality or do we put in work how is it like well before like when ny started yeah he was saying something like some Ghanaians working with nigerians and stuff like that we're like okay so you mentioned can promise yeah. and no no no, no. posiji and posiji yeah, yeah. posiji kill beats and all yes that. and then he was talking about sound yes so they are doing all these things right yeah sometimes i feel like our uh, people, like, yeah, yeah, dog, other people, not dying. Yeah, 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 you know, feel. so they feel say there is big money out there than Ghana. Yeah. So they would rather put in their everything to support those people and then just feed on those chicken, chicken change in Ghana, right? So when you look at these videos, for example, when you look at Burner Boy, even Risk It, their videos are just top notch. Yeah, they are. When you are watching the video quality, yes, the location, look, everything, everything, and then the the amount of money involved. Put in the work. The, yes. the work. They've put in a lot of work. Yes, it's paying off. So let's say uh, when you are standing by the river, and then you're trying to throw in some breadcrumbs to see these fishes, fishes. come and eat. The more you throw. The more they come. The more they come. So until we also put in that much of, you know, money, it is not going to work. Because, for example, um, I think the Nigerian music or the entertainment industry annually produces about two million US dollars. You know, I don't know about Ghana, how much we produce. Maybe I'll have to 
check. Yeah, research on that. Two million dollars is not small money. Mm -hmm. But before they achieve that amount, they had to really invest. Okay. So to get that kind of quality content, mm -hmm. you need to put in investment. Look at your equipment. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There are people shooting videos and content with these other phones and cheap ass cameras mm -hmm. and stuff. How do you achieve that? Comparing them to those using the quality cam cameras yes. and everything. People are using, I don't know much about these, but red and stuff like that. Yeah. There are upgrades of these cameras. Right. Nigerians, I know they are going for those, you know, brands. All right. And then I think with the, I heard um, uh, Strongman yeah. exchanging words with some old boxer or whatever. <laughs> and then Strongman was saying something like, oh, no, 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 Jumana, oh, you know, sometimes these Ghanaian artists, you know, they fund their own stuff. Yeah. They don't really have people backing them. Sure. So they fund everything themselves. Mm -hmm. So one and it's person, not easy. it's not easy. It's not easy. So to fund that alone, no, it's it's tough. So how do you get that kind of quality? We know Abra, Usika sa, alright. Yes, it's Usika sa. And I could just watch it, watch it, but I don't for now watch it, no. Who misika? You know, when did you ever go and buy something? Na Usika or Butuma? You say watch it, watch it, When you have money, you don't ask for all those things. You just buy. Hey, are you sure? Oh yeah. Watch it. If you talk about watch it, yeah. If you know. 10 cities now and so on. Buy 20 cities. But because you don't have 20 cities, you say, or you will talk 5 cities, 5 cities. <laughs> if you, say, <laughs> one carbon, you understand? <laughs> yeah. So until we invest yeah. in that uh, 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 part of that industry, I don't think we can actually match them. Okay. So I think we have All to right. really invest so, in NY, that. So how do you see, comparing your lyrics, mm. your lyrics to ours, the Nigerian lyrics, the, the sound, will I say sound? Their quality videos, their location, the work they put in it, and everything. Well, I've always said that let's not rubbish what the Ghanaian artists are doing. Okay. Like, most of them are really putting in the work. Yeah. Um, they are putting in as much as, because listen, that's what feeds you. That's what puts my, uh, food on the table. Yeah. So if you are going in for it, you're definitely going in with your A game. He made mention of the fact that um, our artists do not have the resources, the support, and all that. But irrespective, they've done so well shooting all the videos. Let's not forget. See, somebody like Batman, now known as Samini, back then was winning Kora Awards. I mean, artists, Kodrianchi Dems were getting to the BETs when the Nigerians had not even had nominations. What was, what was accounting for that? These Ghanaian artists are putting in the work. Of course. The Nigerians, yes, I've told you, they have the blueprint. They have people funding them. You see Davido, you see Whiskey, you see Paturankin and all these people come to, Niger uh, to come to Ghana frequently. There are people supporting them. There are people organizing boat camps for them to come to Ghana and live here and enjoy and go back. Some of them are even beginning to own properties in Ghana because they have the support system. Unfortunately, if you pick Ghanaian artists, pick any of them and ask yourself how many of them really have a record label supporting them? How many of them? We, we saw Black Sheriff. You see the videos he shoots now? Yeah. Exactly, because he has that support from, from, from a record label, an established distribution agent. So until we have those supports, look at somebody like, if you watch three music awards for the past few years, you look at the people who designed the state set and everything. These are people in Ghana. Nane yeah. Sihini and all those people are doing the work. Spotify wants to run an advert and there are Ghanaians who are shooting it. There are Ghanaians who are scripting it. Yeah. We have the talents here. We have the men. The fact is that we don't have enough support. We don't have the finances to put it together. That's How why many... I, say, I said support earlier. But so you, you were... see what? No, when I talk about support, mm -hmm. we are looking at the finances, for instance. Look at the three music awards set. One auditorium, we had about four different stages. And these were designed by Ghanaians. You remember that black sherry scene where water dropped from yeah, the top yeah. and all that? Yeah. These were all designed by Ghanaians. It was done by Ghanaians. Black sherry during rehearsals didn't even know the rains were going to come from that direction. He only knew there was going to be rains, but he didn't know how it was going to work. Yeah. So the technical team were back and was just praying that nothing goes wrong at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. These were designed by Ghanaians. So do you think that we can't shoot videos, we can't shoot all those things? We can shoot them, but the fact is, if you go to maybe, I've forgotten the guy who designed the set's name. But if I, if I remember, I'll try and bring it up. If you go to him and he tells you that, okay, this is what I want to do. This is the music video. Okay. We draw a concept. He tells you that, listen, I'll need $50,000 to shoot it. Okay. Do you have that so, money? That, that's why I go in with, what do, we, what do we have to do? 
although what do we need to do to merit comparing we are not comparing the nigerian and the ghanaian but what do we need to do for our music industry the, the ghanaian music industry to be there i think i think that um most of these big men gurus you know music is such a powerful tool all right that brings people together all right so you heard honorable Kennedy japan saying that when he becomes a president he's going to use music you understand to unite the people and change our perception and everything all right so music is a very powerful tool so if you know you have that box behind you yeah. pick up an artist support them because if you really do and put in that investment you are going to i mean get it back yeah. but i don't know if it's because uh we still have that perception Perception. that oh oh yeah as a for life really yeah no you see that thing has been there i mean if you're in the creative space we mm -hmm. see you as yeah. a non-serious serious person yeah. yeah and and that's because there were certain people who led certain lives and so we thought that okay almost the only serious yeah but let's not forget the creative art industry is a billion dollar industry Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, knew the very reason why anywhere he went on campaigns, he went with either musicians or actors. Okay. Do you know why? Because he knew that whatever he was going to say, people would listen to it, they would go through this ear. Yeah. But when people acted it to the people, they would understood it and it would stick with them. Yeah. There's a reason why they built Gamma Films, now turned into TV3. Yeah. He knew the impact and the, how, how the creatives were going to do a lot of... Even recently, look at our politicians. When they are going to do their campaigns, don't they go with musicians and all that? No, they do. Why do they go with them? Just to entertain the crowd? Mm -hmm. Because they know it will bring in some attention. Yeah. But the fact is, when that is done, what else? They sweep them under the carpet because they don't care about them. So we just need to understand that music is powerful. When you started this conversation, I made mention of Nigeria. Yeah. Whenever you mention Nigeria, people thought of fraud, 419. Yeah. But they've changed it that's over why, time. Yeah, that's why I switched to, let me switch to uh, the gospel industry too mm. i think it's the same thing right the nigerians are there the ghanaians are here and um, they you have see, their numbers all right so i'm not trying to compare there, but there's one thing there's one thing that the gospel gradually is changing but the gospel industry for instance they took everything as a joke really? they don't see the business with the music okay let me be very sincere a lot of gospel artists at some point in time mm. saw that as a joke like asking mm. a and all that so they will go to church, they will minister, their churches don't really care about them. A gospel artist will perform in the church, and we are. I can say, oh, Jewena Fafaka. Oh, Nyamin Kaohu. And all those things. But the yeah. person goes to the studio, records, pays for record course, time, yeah. shoots music videos, spends money in there. So there's a lot to understand. We need to understand that it's his business. Yes, a lot goes Exactly. In there. Now, if, if, if we are calling for support, yes, people need to support our creators. People need to pay them and all that but if we are putting in the money and we are not getting the returns nobody no no businessman wants to do that no look at the movie industry for instance we had the Commode. exactly we had all the producers invested in movies and all that at some point when they realized they were not making their monies back what did they do they all diverted and started selling phones and all that yeah. they are businessmen first so until we have people who are passionate about the industry and want to go all out for it we will keep having this conversation about Ghana, Nigeria, and, all, and for me, I've said it, forget about Nigeria. Nigeria should not be your competition. They are okay. far gone. Yeah. Forget about them. Identify what blueprints it is they are using. Do you see South Africans fighting Nigerians? No. Exactly. If you go to South Africa, they have house music, they have Kwaito, they have Ama Piano is global now. They do everything. Are they fighting? Until the recent death of um, AK, he was always battling with um, Caspar Nuvest and all... They have, that, they have their thing going there. So we need to understand that if Ghanaian music, and let's say this, Ghanaian artists have their dashboards. When they sit behind their Spotify accounts, their iTunes accounts, they see where the streaming is coming from. Yeah, okay. If they are listening to you from Kenya, get a plug there, go and play. When I talked about Gambia, he said he doesn't understand why Nigerians are playing at the O2 and Ghanaians want to go to Gambia. Listen, we have a lot of similarities when it comes to music and all that. If they are playing your shows there, Kwame Eugene sold out almost a 20,000 sports stadium in Gambia. And do, you, and do you think that's a joke? Listen, and now the Nigerians to take over the UK and the US. Take advantage of the African market. Do you know the population of Africa? And music from Africa is becoming big. Take a, listen, take advantage of those African countries. 
as Nigeria looks at the UK and the US, take advantage of your own background, grab it in pieces. Before you realize, you've dominated. And that's what the Ghanaian artists should be doing, not fighting Nigeria. I've said that, listen, if you want to fight them, fighting will not bring anything. Yes, we have that back and forth rivalry and all that, that's fine. If we want to actually do anything with Nigeria, it has to be with collaborations and not competitions. Yes. Yeah. Collaborations yes. are the way forward for both countries and not competitions. But until then, as Nigeria seems to be actually safeguarding their country mm -hmm. and preventing all the influx, Ghana, look at the other African countries, take advantage of that, and you'll be great. As you said, the, the blueprint, right? Exactly. You know our Na blueprint. See, we were here. When, when, when um, Joy B released Tonga De Rhyme with Corner, yeah. there was a particular chord progression in that song. The likes of Don Jazzy, everybody picked it from Nigeria, and they made use of it. And they started releasing songs that were having that same chord progression. And they took a while. Okay. Afrobeat, if you listen to Afrobeat, almost all the songs sound alike, right? Yes. They've, they've identified something and they are doing it. If you listen to West Coast song, tell me which of them actually makes sense. I was actually <laughs> saying that, me, like, personally, I feel Black Sheriff yeah. has better lyrics than Burner Boy. You his, see? His style is different. They have, they, have, the style. they have unique styles, yes. yes. People say that, okay, I, I think people are chastising Burner Boy for saying that Afrobeats is, uh, doesn't make sense or it's, 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 it's just a one-way thing. And basically, it's true. Afrobeats is a feel-good feel kind of music. None of them is preaching anything or making sense. Yeah. It's just a feel-good thing. I want to wind your waist. I want to do what I want to do. What I mean... Yes, it's content, mm -hmm. but which of them is speaking any sense? It's just a feel-good thing. So I don't see why people are even chastising Burner Boy. Because what he said is the truth. Ghana has hip life. We have high life. High life. We have whatever yeah. that we have. We've gone global with those sounds. Unfortunately, because we are not so happy with what we have, we decided to put all that aside and go for what we call Afrobeats. And you know why it's even Afrobeats? It's because the white man actually wants to be able to market what you bring. So we need to box everything and call it Afrobeats. The Grammys, I think last year, made some mistakes on, on Twitter, the Recording Academy. They were trying to define music from Africa, and they were defining every song from Africa as Afrobeats. And they had some heavy backlash. They said it was an infusion of music from America and blah, blah, blah. And like, yo, listen, Africa has its own sound as well. Yeah. The Grammys have now considered music from Africa, and they created a category for it, for instance. They made mention of Asaka from Ghana, right? Yes, they did. They made mention of Afrobeats and other sounds from across Africa. And they said that's not limited because they know that when they came to Africa, they realized that, listen, there are a lot of sounds across Africa and they can't nominate every Everybody. one of them. So Ghana, forget about boxing your thing into Afrobeats. Keep your hip life. Keep your high life. Let it go. We will get there because we've been there before. By and by, don't you think that... Uh there is some sort of like language barrier. Because I wanted to ask this. Yeah. What pushes music? Is it the sound? Is that's it what, the lyrics? That's what, what I asked earlier. Is it, is, it, is it their quality? Music is a spirit. We just need, we need to understand. Music is a spirit. Mm. And then again, when you talk about the sound and all that, what sound are we talking about? If you listen to, um, we've been here. Years ago, we had um, this, I've forgotten the name of the artist. But we're here singing Windek. Windek. Did yeah. you understand yeah. Windek? No. We're here dancing to A Alaji. Do you understand yeah. A Alaji? Yeah. I mean, there was a particular Gangnam style. Gangnam style, PSY. <laughs> there, there was a point in time when we had um there's I think there's a francophone song which was talking about a broken heart sort of thing. But we're here in Ghana dancing to it because we didn't we didn't understand the song. There are broken heart songs that we sit in Ghana we <laughs> dance to. There are songs people sing in church. Because of how it, goes. how it goes. And they think that it's a gospel it song, but yeah. it's actually some love-making song. So is it a rhythm? So that's what I'm oh. saying. Music is a spirit. So far as you are able to listen to the music and, 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 and vibe with it, that's how it goes. A lot of the Americans who are listening to Afrobeats now don't really understand what is happening. When you listen to um, I'm a piano sounds, I'm a piano, piano, I didn't say anything. No. But you're dancing to it, I'm not dancing to it. Isn't that a global song? It is. Exactly. The tune. So that's what I'm saying. You can't really define music and the sound. It's basically a spirit. It's, like it's just trying to define it. But as Ghanaians, like you say, we should find a blueprint. Right? You see? So that blueprint, 
the, is... blue, the blueprint is doing what you do best. What do we do best? We have a high life. We you see the challenge is that people think that when you say high life, high life should be what the Jacko the most were doing. No, sound grows. So as it grows, you fusing other yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? We need to understand and fuse in some of these things to the taste of the current generation. So but the elderly will sit back and say, oh, because they can't relate. That's the problem we have. And there's always that generational problem because when you are moving from one to the other, when hip life was invoked, when Red Rockstone and the like started with the hip life, radio presenters had problems. And why? You said, how? No, you see, the elderly can't relate to the kind of songs that the young ones are doing now. Who le 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 where was it making sense? We but were, we're dancing to it. We were here. When Jedu Ble Amble and all those people were saying Moses say more quiet them and all that was and all it that. was it a sensible song? But we did. The only challenge is that they will use proverbs, so you wouldn't understand easily. Yeah. But uh, the current crop of music wouldn't mind using the F, F word, word or using yeah. certain things. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. They feel you just need to polish it. But every generation has, has its own. You can listen to music from the 80s mm -hmm. today and realize, hey, I can't know can't quite say power. Exactly. Do you get it? If be, because of the rights and all those understanding about music now, take a song like Obos, uh, yeah. if that song was played today, do you know how, how many feminists will come at Obo? Yeah. You know why? Because how can he say that? When you in so you me pay. Oh, that it doesn't me. make sense. There you is get this, it. There is this but it was played song. years ago and we danced to it. But today, if anybody brings that song out, or Chami Kwame at some point in time released a song and he says, in I think in one of his lines, he made mention of the fact that um So why are you cry? Why why obi obi a cry obi obi a cry? I say, uh-huh, like you know why? Because it didn't represent who he is, he is as now. a family yeah. man. So things are changing. We need to understand all these things. Today's music will sound trash to the next 10, 20 years. Yeah. So we just need to understand it and there, go with it like that. There is this music. I don't know who sang it, but it's actually one of my favorite, though. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, um, it's this cool vibe. I don't know. Uh, and you may... And you so may... Uh, yeah. And then I think you, it's from Aqua. Aqua. And then Mr. Aqua or something. the sound, the lady... There's a... Mm, 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 kind of sound. Mm, yeah. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> like, really? But that song was not made for you. <laughs> <laughs> that song was not made yeah. for you. <laughs> you so, know? I think sometimes it's just because we as a people or we as uh, in the creative industry, whatever they call it, yeah. I, I think we are being lazy. If you ask me. Really? For, for me. Are, for me. You know what NY, NY is doing? He's in the industry. So, no, see. You see, we don't need to do PR with this. Okay. There's a challenge, which we all understand there's a challenge. When Camilo's song, uh, what's the title of the song? Uh, it blew recently and had the Nigerians jump on it. Mm -hmm. um, I've forgotten Sugar the Sugar Cane. Sugar, Sugar Cane. Yeah. When that song blew up and then he had investors, he shot a video to it that had the Nigerians in yeah. there. Do you know how far that song went with the investors? Mm -hmm. Because they were able to place this in certain circles. Kim Promise, as we speak with Terminator, is one of the songs in the Nigerian charts. Yes, it's trending. It's in the, in the, it's in the Afro Beast chart in the UK. It's in the Afro Beast chart on Billboard in the USA. You know why? There's a deliberate promotional attempt because there's money pushing it. Yeah. Now, when somebody like, um, I don't want to mention any artist's name, but if, if a young artist releases a song, that could be that could sound excellent or whatever. Do you think it will get there? So there, there needs to be that support. There needs to be that finance. Our artists are not lazy. No, let's not say our artists are. They are not lazy. Okay. They are putting in all the work. Listen to Kevin Boy's music. Wouldn't it stand any song from Rayma and all those people? It will. it will. But why is it that Kevin Boy is not there? Kevin Boy at the year when Camilo had that big song. Also had a very big song. But how come it didn't fly as much as that of... Camilo. The support? Because he didn't have that financial muzzle yeah. to push it. So we need to understand that our artists are doing very well. Sarkozy has worked as an independent artist for how long? Single-handedly. He's been to the BETs multiple oh, yeah. times. Yeah. He's done things all over the world. He's recognized as one of the biggest rappers out of Africa. And all that. 
Nasty C is in South Africa. He is signed to one of the biggest record labels, Sony and all that. But how big is Nasty C across Africa? But Sarkodie's blueprint is all over Africa. Do you get it? So we need to understand that our artists are doing very well. Imagine Sarkodie was signed to maybe any of the biggest record labels in the world. Okay. Do you know what that could have done? Let me tell you something. So what is preventing Sarkodie from signing those Sarkodier, kind of No, you see, you don't just sign to record labels. You can't just do that. There are, there are clauses. There are certain things. You need to forfeit certain things. Sarkodie, in one of his songs, says that, so who created the baby publishing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he, just, he has to make sure that the publishing rights, all those things are put in place. Okay. Recently, you see artists in America selling their catalogs to record labels and selling them for $20 million and blah, 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 and all that. When you sign to record labels... They have certain amount of money they give you a four. And then you have to use that money. Now they will have to also market the music, make all the, they can from that music before they start paying anything else. Okay. So it's not like, okay, you are signed on to a record label and that's it. No. We have your talk. We signed to Empire. Jackie was signed to um, Sony, West Africa. You have um, Black Sheriff signed to Empire. But can you compare your talk's career to that of um of black sheriff obviously mm. not exactly so it depends on what you are signing and all that and we need to understand if sarkoda was signed to any of these record labels i'm pretty sure he could have done much i was making mention of the fact that sarkoda released a hip-hop project before he did the jams album now on that album he was supposed to feature one of the biggest american artists right now do you know how much they were charging yeah, okay they were charging huge sums of money and that, that was just for the recording. Yeah. After the recording, if you need to shoot the video, that's going to come with another cost. Mm -hmm. And when you are done with all that, you are not done. The record label of the artist will have to clear you before you're able to release the song. Yeah. Now, if you sit in Ghana and you spend over a million dollars on the production, are you going to make that money back? <laughs> are we going to make that money back? So, anyway, I don't mean to cut you, but I think we need to do a part two of this. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. No, the Ghana music industry, <laughs> because... for me, when anybody says that, the artists are lazy and they are not doing well. I think the person is speaking from a point of, sorry to say, ignorance. Our artists are doing so well. And you see, most of the time when we talk, we just look at maybe the hip life artists, the secular Look at the gospel artists, for instance. Look at Joe Metal, featuring Louise Ma Louis McLean and all those people from elsewhere. Look at how they are flying. MOG and all those people are all over the world trying to do whatever it is to do. They are putting in the work. The work. They just need the financial muscle to push them into certain yeah. places. And again, our talents should actually collaborate. They should network. Okay. Because you have some of the finest brains, the Ghanaian brains in all these big institutions, the likes of Apple Music, YouTube, and all those. We have Ghanaians there. Let's start networking and see how best we can take advantage of the places they occupy so that together Ghana's music would actually be out there. And let's not fight, let's stop fighting Nigeria. Gambia is there. So the guy is there. Sierra Leone is there. Ivory Coast is there. This. Yes. I mean, like I keep saying, we have artists playing in Sierra Leone. Kaki, when Kaki was playing Toffee Pontong and all that, she was selling places in Gambia. Okay. But the fact is, that's how you make the money. Start looking around you. For anybody to stay in business, mm -hmm. you need to identify what the problem is yes. and create a solution, right? Of course, yeah. There are people in Nigeria who don't want your music. Why do you still want to push yourself there? Mm. You can't stay. Mm. There are people in Gambia who want your music. Why don't you go there and still want to fight? Okay. So, Daddy K, your yeah. final words? I still stand by my <laughs> feeling that... NY is doing PR. <laughs> yeah, they are being lazy, for real. Because um, at the end of the day, it's about what you want. Okay. How far you want to go and how you can achieve it. Yeah. Yeah, the monetary aspect is there, mm -hmm. you know. The fundings and everything is there. For example, if um, with my business, like what I'm doing right now, I sat down and I was like, okay, before I can really get to um, my clients or whoever I want to, whatever, I need to go to them. You have to go to them. But who told you artists are not doing that? Okay, so you think they are really doing that? Yes, I don't think they are doing all that stuff. You see, I, I know. See? I know time is almost done. Yeah, I mean, time I is fast. Me. Yeah, <laughs> he should forgive me for this one. Listen, our artists, yes, they are trying. I've told you, that is what they do. That's their business. That's their life. Yeah. Who want to put their business on the line and say that 
I don't care about it. That's what's feeding you. That's what you are doing full time. So you need to be committed to it. The if I if I can walk to you and tell you that, listen, this is my business plan. Yeah. I need ten million dollars to do this. This is going to be the return on investment. You look at it and you're like, okay, it makes sense. Won't you invest because you're, you're a businessman? You also no, want I to get your profit. Yeah. You will do it. When you look at uh, Unavailable is one of the biggest songs in the world right now, right? Yeah. Why would the video still the be video. a remix with Lato? It's business. business. He wants to enter into a particular market. So, and do you think you can just go and feature Lato? You need some bucks. Mm -hmm. You need to be signed to a particular record label that can put you guys together. And artists don't have that. So, let, let's not say they are lazy. For me, they are working. Mm -hmm. They are lazy parts in the day. You know, the French will say, <laughs> a party d'aujourd'hui, like effective today from today. Please don't say that again. The lazy <laughs> they are working. Sometimes their lyrics. You know, sometimes, you know, when you hear these people, their lyrics and everything. The Nigerians don't have any better lyrics than the oh, Ghanaian oh, artists. And oh, why? They and why? They, they don't. They, do. they, they do. don't. What? They do. Just give me one okay, song. Well, I wanted to uh, comment about that gospel thing you brought up. Because mm -hmm. there is this gospel song that the woman says, Dokunon in Chinam, Dokunon in Chinam, Unyami Bema Mew. Like, listen to, <laughs> listen to this. You see, brother, so I will not be too happy with you. <laughs> but, <laughs> we will come for you. <laughs> but, okay, okay. See, I think we need to go for, we need to come back with a part two of this discussion because it's getting lovely it's getting fun educative and entertaining and everything um before i sign out we are proudly sponsored by sankey's restaurant sankey's restaurant is located at um tech Jub um, jubilee more yeah the second floor if you want that sumptuous meal that sumptuous meal that cocktail that nice and serene environment to eat and have fun with your family just come in and Lynn's Fashion Paradise is located at Kodiasi Pankrono. For that beautiful outlook, as a lady, you, you have to look good to impress. I mean, you know, so go there. She will dress you very well. And Pretty Clothing Light is also located at Odium Runabout, opposite at Sakwari Rao Bank, too. And we're also sponsored by TJ Films, too. Thank you for watching our interview. We did well, right? We did well. <laughs> Yeah, we did very well. Okay, so before I send out, the name has always been Ohema, and this is content on people and places.